So I'm gonna go ahead and record this and uh, mute y'all and we'll, we'll look at this in a, in a moment. So I might have to mute y'all if the feedback gets too much. All right, so here's an equation. <clears throat> All right, let me let somebody else in. So I'm just waiting until that person shows up. There you go. Welcome aboard, D. So we're just getting started to go over the warm up. Now, the difference with this logarithmic equation is you don't have the same base. So you can't reverse logging both sides. Base three and base five are different. Now, um, we're going to just do procedures to solve this. But before we do that, let's look at the graphs of a log base three, five X and a log base five X, right? Because having a picture can be very helpful. So let's treat these as two different graphs. So basically we wanna find when the Y's are equal, the intersection of these two graphs, all right? So let's say one, two, and then negative one, negative two, one, two, three, well, let me make let me make this bigger. One. All right, so that's five, that's three, that's one. Okay, well the parent function of this would be just log base three x. And so this is just log five x, log base three x, and then we'll do the transformation. Okay, both of these are gonna have a one X to get a zero exponent. And then when you use base three, the next one's gonna be three to the first. So you need a one exponent base three, right? And then with base five, you gotta go five to the first. So to get that one exponent, put that up a little bit. You gotta go all the way over here to five. All right, so notice that there's if we were just solving the problem without the five X, we already have the intersection. Both of these would have to be the log of one. Now again, we're ignoring the five right now. All right, let me let in two people. All right, y'all, we're just going over the warm up. So we're solving this equation and I'm just going over the two graphs. Right now, if we did between zero and one, that's where we have negative exponents. So if base three and base five would become one third and one fifth. So with the five, you'd have to go all the way over here to one fifth. Right. So this five is going to drag farther away. Now I'm going to use a blue for the three to make that easier. Now with the three, you only have to go as far as one third. So that would be right here to get your negative exponent. Okay, so notice the only place they intersect before we start thinking about the five X, if this was just X, would be there. And so this would be log of one equals log of one, they'd have to have a zero exponent. But that's a five X and that's a domain dilation. So that means one fifth, all right? So in green, what used to be at one now occurs at one fifth. What used to be three to the first, so when x was three, you needed a one exponent, base three. Now that's one fifth of three, which would be three fifths, which would be way over here. All right, so again, notice it's squeezing. And that means that these are gonna intersect now somewhere over here, right there. So one fifth would now be where the one is, somewhere in between one fifth and zero. So we know that because where they used to intersect at one is now at one fifth. And so somewhere down here is now where the intersection occurs, which has gotta be less than one fifth, again, because of the domain dilation. What used to be at one is now at one fifth. 
you know, we don't really need to worry about knowing the graph. I'm just pointing that out. So we know that this has got to be the case. So between zero and 0.2 is the solution. All right, as far as solving this, first thing we got to do is the change in base property. And really what you're doing when you do this is you're converting everything to base 10. That's really what you're doing when you do that. Okay, so now we got to get the log x on the same side by itself. And so we got log 5x, so we can at some point turn that into log 5 plus log x. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply log 3, and that way this becomes a fraction times log x. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and transform this. So if you have multiplication in the value, that means originally you would have added the exponents. So this is now gonna become log five plus log x. Now I'm gonna subtract the log x and get this both on the same side. And so there's gonna be a log five on this side, and then this is gonna be a minus log x. Okay, and so now what do we do? Well, we factor out the log x. And this is gonna become minus one, and then we're gonna have this fraction. All right. Okay, now this is a yucky denominator. And I forgot to put the five here because remember that came from right here. So I forgot to put the five over here. Okay, so I'm gonna multiply to get rid of this denominator. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by log five. This is gonna become log five squared. This is gonna become log three minus log five. All right, we're almost done. Now we're gonna solve for log x. So we're gonna divide by this and that's gonna become the exponent to 10 because log x is gonna equal this new fraction. So we're gonna get Okay, so that's where we're at. Now I'm gonna erase stuff on the left, but this is where we're at. So let me review how we got there. My internet connection is unstable. Great. I don't know what the heck that means. Give me a second, y'all. Let me see if I'm streaming something. Nope, I'm not. So I don't know what the problem is. <clears throat> All right. So first we did the change in base property. So that converted everything to base 10. And then I multiplied by log 3. So that became a log 3 over log 5 to the log x. And then we had log 5x over here. And then I did the multiplication property with logarithms, so that becomes log five plus log x, and that equals this. All right, then I went ahead and got the log x's on the same side, so I subtracted, so then this becomes also minus log x, and that's where we're at right here. So log five stayed on the left side. Okay, and then I went ahead and factored out the log x, and that came up here. Okay, so again, notice that's minus an understood one, and then there's that fraction. So that's why there's that fraction minus one. Okay, and then I decided to deal with the log five denominator right here. So I multiplied log five on both sides. So this is gonna become log five squared. 
And then here we're going to get log 3 minus log 5. So that's where we're at there. And then I divided by what was multiplied to log x. And so here we are. Now that can be a little simplified. If you look at the bottom, notice we're subtracting the logarithms. Okay, and so we can now change that a little bit. So if we're subtracting logarithms, then the three must have been originally divided by the five. So now we have that equation, all right? So here's our exponent, and the base is 10, and that's the value. All right, so 10 to this equals x. And if you do that, you'll get point, where did I put that? Zero, zero, 006. 277. So notice how very close to zero that is. Just by the domain dilation of one fifth. Shifted the solution, which normally would have been x1 if that wasn't there, if that was just x, shifted it to between zero and one fifth. Alrighty, so um, it looks like we're all here. Uh, well, maybe not quite all of us. Uh, let me allow someone to enter before I talk about what's going on. So today's the last day of class. Um, just went over the warm up, and next uh, Monday we will just have the last assessment, and then that's it. All right, so. Today's the last little thing we're gonna look at and it's just gonna be exponential equations. Um, and what's gonna be on the Monday assessment um, is basically exponential equations. Um, and I'll be more specific like I did the last time. I'll put something on Google Classroom and be specific about. This is the last day. So you're right, you don't have to worry about the Monday assessment. Now you're more than welcome, but nope, you don't have to worry about it. The only thing you have to worry about is today's warm up and today's homework. Okay, so basically the last days today for seniors, last homework, last warm up today. For non seniors, there's not going to be a warm up or homework on Monday, it's just going to be an assessment. So I'll just go over the homework on Monday and then I'll just give you guys the last assessment. Okay, so hope, hopefully this will help you out and I don't know if there's more demands on you guys in your other classes, but you know. All righty. So anything on the homework you want me to go over? Let's, uh, let's go ahead and look at that issue. All right, so here is what I did for y'all. Um, now you only have to do the odds and the way I structured it, I kind of pieced it together. So you had some numbers that occurred earlier happening at the bottom of the page. And so I just went in the order that you would have. So, you know, jumping from a 23 to a seven and a 13, right? Now hopefully a lot of this was okay. I know there might've been a couple tricky ones. But um, notice with number 11, when you have numbers multiplied to the logs, you got to reverse to the power property first. Then you can have a log on both sides. Now, unlike the warm up here, the bases are the same, so you can just reverse logging. Okay, and then here, 17, when you reverse the plus to the multiplication of the two values, and then you switch it to the exponential, the two would be the exponent and the base is 10, and then just as a matter of in this case, you could factor it, and it worked out pretty good. But the last resort would be quadratic formula, if not possible. All right, and then 23, you had to get the logs on the same side, and so I, I skipped the step. Since you would have plus this log eight on the right, so that meant it would have been plus logs, so that's why that got multiplied, and then the exponent's one, so eight to the first equals that. All right, and then 
again here just rearranging a lot of this. Now this is a negative log, but that really means a negative one. And so the three becomes the exponent, the negative one becomes the exponent. And now since you got the logs with the same base equal on both sides, you could just go ahead and drop the logs. And here using the one third power, maybe you intuitively knew that was one third. All right, and then here, you'd have to subtract the log, so that becomes a minus, so then now we got our fraction. And then, so the exponent's one, so 10 to the first equals that fraction, and then here you can just cross multiply. All right, and then 25 had the little e issue, and e's not really intuitive, like um, e to the third power, you'd be like, what? But two to the third power, you'd be like, oh, eight. So we kind of are better off with E by putting into some kind of simplified form. That way you don't have to estimate. Okay, just like with pi. So same thing, we have the plus, so this becomes multiplied, and now the exponent is four, so it's base E. And then here, since this is definitely not an integer, E to the fourth is definitely not an integer, you can't factor this. So if you want to use the quadratic formula, you can do that, and here I completed the square. All right. Okay, and then with 29, once you converted with, to the uh, division, you were able to factor out each part and that eliminated the X factor. So since this equaled negative one, that means the base one third has a negative one exponent, which is the reciprocal. So that becomes three and then you cross multiply. Okay, and then the last problem here, when you uh, solve this, same kind of thing. You get each part with the minus on both sides converted to the fraction. And then now you can reverse logging both sides. Right, since the bases are both the same, even though you don't know the numerical values, they're both A. And then you just solve this. You can go ahead and cross multiply. And then boom. Now sometimes there's domain issues. Uh, so if you look at each of these expressions before simplification, right, since we can't have a log of zero, x has got to be greater than one, x has got to be greater than negative six, x has got to be greater than two, x has got to be greater than negative three. Oh, no problem, that's 4.5. Right, sometimes that can be an issue. Um, it didn't appear that that was the case this time, though. Okay, everybody good? Um, they all appear to be okay, but... Um, hmm. Hmm. Um, sorry, I got some heart, um, heartburn for some dumb reason. All right, so here is what um, we skipped. And I'll point out what this means. So a lot of times you get problems and what you can do is convert to a quadratic form. As long as you're using the same base with X and if you have a power of two here, that's really double this X. All right, so let's go ahead and look at some of these exponential situations. All right, so let's say you had something like this. And we've already been doing that kind of stuff. Now, if you want to reverse to the log, so the base would be three, the exponent's negative x, and 81's the value. But let's go ahead and just log both sides. Well, since we have a power as part of the value that negative x multiplies in front. I'm sorry, I said log, so let's log both sides. Although it really wouldn't matter. I know I'm changing it to log, but it, re it really wouldn't matter because you would still get the same re result even if you used ln. But I said log, so I wanted to be specific. Okay, so now basically we're solving for x divided by ne negative log three.
and I just put it as negative. And this would be come four, which should become a uh, negative four rather. Okay, so let's say we had um, a problem with different bases. Now, if th these bases were both three, then we could just put the exponents equal, but they're not. All right, so let's go ahead and log both sides. All right, so now the power is part of the value, so multiply the power in front. Okay, and this is where it can become a little bit of pain because we're going to have to divide by either log three or log five. Um, I'm going to go ahead and divide by log three because when we get the x's on the same side by themselves, we can add this one, right? And then we'll be able to have an x plus something with a fraction x over here. So that's why I'm doing that. Now, maybe you can do a few things at once. All right, so this is no different than some number times two minus x equals x plus two. It's just this number isn't intuitive and it's probably gonna be highly irrational. All right, so then two times that minus x times that and then we'll add to both sides and then subtract the two over here. Again, I don't wanna to go too fast. Okay, and so if you minus the two over here, and then you add that, And so now we want to factor out the x and then divide this quantity into that quantity. Now in this case, we also can factor out a two, but that's just because in the original problem, both of these were two. So you're not always going to be able to do that here, but in this case, you actually can. All right, so we factor out the x, we're going to divide by one plus log five over log three. Okay, now if you want to go ahead and multiply everything by log three, to get rid of the denominators, you can do that here if you want. All right, so then we're gonna have x and then you just divide by that. And again, this is a little cumbersome, but that's just because we're maintaining exact value to the very end, right? And so no, no accuracy has been lost when we do this. And now if you want, you can multiply top and bottom by log three. And so then you get two log five minus two log three, and then log three plus log five, and notice there's still a whole lot of simplifying we can do, but even right here, that two becomes the power of five, that two becomes the power of three, and then we have the division, and then we have the plus, so this becomes three times five. So we can actually simplify that. Right. Kind of cool. All right, now let's look at some quadratic forms. 
Let's see what we could do with quadratic forms. Let me pause. Does anybody have any questions about that? You know, it's a little bit clunky, but that's just because of dealing with this log fraction. All right, so let's say we had e to the 2x plus e to the x minus 6 equals 0. This is a quadratic form, right? And so this is no different than m squared plus m minus 6 equals 0, right? Or, or m is that. So the factors of negative 6 that add to be 1 would be uh, 3 and negative 2. All right, and then notice when we multiply, we're going to get ex times ex, which means we would add the exponents. And so we get 2x, right? Okay, so now it's just a matter of doing the zero product property with these two expressions equal to zero. All right, so we're solving these two problems. All right. Now this one's not possible. Remember, E is a positive number. No exponent to a positive number is going to produce a negative. All right, so not possible. But this one is an exponent to the e to get 2. All right, so we can just reverse this to the logarithm. So the exponent is x, the value is 2. Now, if you want to ln both sides, you could do that as well. You'll get x times the ln of e, which is x times 1. So that's the answer. This one we have to exclude because it's not possible. All right, now let's look at a little more involved quadratic form. And here we use base e. And this was a lot less demanding. Well, let's say we had Okay, if we can do a quadratic form, then we're going to need to have the base 5, and this is going to have to become 5 of to the exponent of 2x. Right, well, we can do that because 25 is 5 squared. Right? Okay, so now basically a is 3, b is negative 2, and c is negative 5. Now this one might be factorable, and I'll point out what to do if it's not factorable. All right, so 3 times negative 5, so factors of negative 15 that add to be negative 2. All right, so negative 5 and 3. All right, so since you got the 3, 5x here, and you need a 3, this would have to be a 1. And then since you have the 5x here and you need a negative 5, that would have to be negative 5. All right, so notice when you multiply these two, you get 3 times 5x times 5x. Well, we would add the exponents, since these are both base 5. Right, and so that is 3, 5 to the 2x. And then this would become negative 5, 5x 
that would become three five X, which makes negative two five X. And I'm saying five X, but five has an exponent of X. And notice negative five times one. So I don't know if that's helpful, but. All right, so now we gotta do the same thing. All right, so our zero product property. So then we solve this, or we solve this. All right, so add five, divide by three. All right, that's not possible because there's no exponent to a positive number that could get a negative. This one is possible, right? So we can log both sides, or if you want to switch it to the log base five logarithm and deal with it that way. So if we log both fives, this X is going to multiply to the log. And then you can divide. And I just used, I hate to use the division symbol, but I think in this case, that'll be a lot more helpful. All right, now this one wasn't, was factorable, but there are some times when these things get weird and they're not factorable. All right, so what would you do if this was not factorable? Okay, well then what you can do, whatever the quadratic formula equals, it would be that. And so then you would do your negative B plus or minus over 2A. And so you'll get two numbers. And so you'll have your two equation 5X equals to one number or 5X equals to the second number. And if one of these is negative, then that's going to be no solution. Right, and so then it would be basically the log of that number divided by the log of five. So which one, every one of these is positive becomes a solution. So it would be the log of that number divided by the log of five. So that's what you would do if you weren't able to factor this. Okay. Anybody wanna ask anything? Any clarification about anything? Okay, so that's this is this is basically it. So on um, Monday, uh, non seniors, you'll get the assessment. Now, if there's a senior that wants to do that, I mean, I don't want to deny you, but I mean, but it's not something you have to worry about. Can I ask a question? Yeah, what's up? Um, for the seniors, there's the test, but are we missing any more lessons? Like, if I if I tune out for the rest, will I miss like? No, there's no for it. Or... No, I'm just going to go over the homework on Monday, and then give the assessment. That's it. No warm up. All no. Right. Homework. Okay. I'm glad you asked. You might not have been the only one that wondered about that. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, anybody else out there? All right. Well, um. Seniors is probably our last uh, chance. So I just want you guys to know it's been good. It's been nice, some of y'all. Um, and I wish you the best, okay? Someone's asking me a question. Yeah, I will, Joe, I will. I just like the last time. It'll probably happen tomorrow afternoon. Um, but I, I definitely will post more specifics about what's on the assessment. Okay, y'all? All right, stay safe, be strong. Thank you, Mr. Napoli. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Napoli. You're yeah, welcome. thank you. Thank you for everything. It's been a great past two years, Mr. Napoli. Right on, Sam. Man. Thank you, Mr. Napoli. Yeah, I miss you. I miss you too, brother. I always remember you fondly. Bye. Bye. This is kind of sad. I don't know why. Transitions are like that, but always think positive, count your blessings. Those yeah. memories will never leave. I always Thank remember that. Thank you very much, Mr. Napoli. It's been a good year. Right on.
God take care. Bye. Bye.